Hey there nation, welcome to show we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and today is another edition of Hobby Side. This is our series of videos that we do of talking about the hobby about miniature wargaming and some of the aspects we're doing for this channel in terms of our hobby for the wargaming experience. So today, the reason why we're having this little Hobby Side video today is because we just learned uh, over the weekend that Games Workshop actually, there's a Games Workshop website actually right here, um, they're actually bringing back uh, Nick Ramunda. Actually, one of my viewers, his name is Wabbit King One, is his name. Uh, he actually brought this to my attention. He left a comment behind talking about how Nick Ramunda is coming back. And I went back to the Games Workshop website, and sure enough, yesterday post they actually put this down on the community webpage that Nick Ramunda is returning, which is freaking amazing. It's just out of sight that it's actually coming back. I was hoping this is what was going to happen eventually. We had heard rumors that certain old specialist games that uh, Games Workshop was, used to have uh, were coming back. Games like Blood Bowl and Nick Ramunda as well. I was super stoked when I saw how uh, Blood Bowl came out last year around November of last year. They came out around Christmas time. They had new football teams, uh, new arenas for you to play at, new updated rules. It was amazing seeing the whole huge surge of comeback for that Blood Bowl game. And I was hoping that the same thing would happen with Nicomunda. Unfortunately, um, when the new rumors came out for Nicomunda, it was supposed to be a video game which I was really sad about. Uh, but then Shadow War Armageddon came out where it was like a skirmish version for Warhammer 40k, which is pretty awesome as well. They had a lot of Nicaragua style rules, things like injuries and ammo rolls and skill advancements and things of that nature. But now, as you can see here, it's official. I just can't believe it. I'm absolutely stoked that this actually happened because I love playing Nicaragua. I remember playing this game back in the 90s uh, when I was a kid and just having a great time with it. It reads, uh, Nicaragua is back. It's been more than a decade since we last visited the Underhive, but very soon you'll be able to battle out in the depths of Hive Primus. Uh, well, that's cool. You got some production art from one of the new gang members. It's probably like an Escher ganger, if I had to guess, because Eschers are awesome. It says, if you're new to the hobby, you may not be familiar with Nicomunda, or perhaps you only heard about it from the fond memories of other hobbyists. Like me! I put the battle reports out for the stuff. It says, Nicomunda dives in the underworld world of the Imperium, allowing players to control their own hive gang, a pack of ruthless criminal killers, augmented with black market cybernetics, gene modifications, and scavenged weaponry. Where Warhammer 40,000 puts you at the head of an army in Nicomunda, the scale is much smaller, but the action is just as intense. Every single ganger counts. This makes me actually feel kind of good about it because they talk about cybernetics and look like cybernetics might be coming back. Same thing with something new here, uh, gene modifications. That wasn't in the last edition of the game, so that'd be kind of cool. Same thing with scavenged weaponry. That's pretty awesome as well. I'm looking forward to see exactly what kind of changes uh, they made. And as you can see, here's like a little icon for under for Nicomunda Underhive. This is pretty cool right here. You got this uh, twisted version of the of, this, of the Imperial Aquila, the two-headed eagle facing in opposite directions. But it looks like a skull, which is kind of cool because in Nicomunda, um, if you've ever seen Nicomunda before, skulls, like you see here in the top here, are very, very big in the design of that game. They're like all over the place. I mean, the planet, I mean, the prefix for the word is Necro, so, you know, of the dead, which is kind of cool. It says, uh, between intense skirmish battle, your gang will grow from a pack of battle-hungry Jews to a feared and respected syndicate of hardened veterans. To get there, however, you will have to battle against your fellow players, each with a gang of their own. The Underhive is a big place, and the gangs that inhabit it are as diverse as the alien races that inhabit the 41st millennium. We're launching your community with two classics, which is really exciting. It says, gangs from House Escher are fast, deadly, and cruel. While lightly armored, these cunning warrior women hold their own in melee combat. While at range, they are notorious for the use of armor-melting plasma weaponry. So that sounds kind of cool. It looks like they're bringing back some of the original gangs. It looks like they're bringing back, uh, looks like uh, house-specific, you know, armory uh, for these guys. As you can see here, like if you look at this picture here, yeah, it's kind of neat. They kept the original kind of like, they went the old school method of the uh, Eschers. You can see that they got their sashes and stuff, and they got their, uh, looks like a gas mask right here. That's like a last pistol right there, it looks like, and just like a regular sword. But they got the crazy hairdos and like the sashes and stuff and the boots. And that's kind of cool that they brought that back. Let's see this one. Oh, yeah, this one, they see they got the Mohawks as well. This one looks like an auto gun, it looks like, that this lady's packing, so that's kind of cool. So it looks like, I'm not sure what that is, it might be a gas mask, but then again, uh, Nick Ramuda miniatures, they've always, especially the ones from the old Gav Thorpe um, sculpts, they all had things on their characters like canteens and satchels and gas masks and grenades and all kinds of cool uh, accessories that they came with. It represent the fact that these gangs were fighting and living in the Underhive, which is actually kind of cool right there, so that's kind of cool. 
And it says the gangers of House Goliath. Oh, House Goliath. For our living testament to a brawn over brains, every member of House Goliath is a slab of vat grown muscle, armed and armored with repurposed industrial gear. That's kind of cool. Like, you can see this guy here. Yeah. This one has a very Mad Maxy feel. You know, look at his mohawk. is made out of metal. He's got a lot of, looks like a lot of salvage metal parts. I think these are grenades, what those are. Those look kind of cool. And it looks like he's got a double, like a double handed chain axe. Which is really, really cool looking as well. That's another thing I'm looking forward to with this edition of Nickermundo. I wonder if they're going to bring in new weapons and equipment that you can buy as well. I mean, the weapons and systems were great for Nickermundo Classic as well as the Community Edition. But it would be kind of neat to see whatever new kind of weapons and things they can bring. I like these boots. You can see the boots with the straps on the side. That's like a classic throwback to the old Goliath miniatures. So that's kind of cool. And then let's see here, this guy. Oh yeah, this guy has got definitely got a gas mask on. It looks like a respirator of some size. What I think is neat is, is, is this gun right here. This looks like a giant stub gun. In case you're unfamiliar with it, um, in Warhammer 40,000 and especially in Nekomuda, stub guns are kind of big. They're kind of like revolvers. So you see that you got the revolving cylinder there. But this one is much larger because stub guns in that game system are more like pistols. So this, I wonder if this is like a stub rifle, maybe, or like an auto shooter with auto slugger, which would be kind of cool. It'd be like an upscaled stub gun that shoots automatic, or it could be a shotgun. Whatever it is, it looks cool, looks big, beefy, looks like a terrorist part of things at close range and high strength. So that's awesome as well. So looking forward to see what kind of new equipment this. This model looks awesome. I like these bases. Looks like the uh, old Sector Imperialis uh, industrial bases. So that was kind of cool. I like that. And then it reads, what makes these plastic, these miniatures even better is that they're available in multi-part plastic kits, so easy to assemble, customize, and paint to a gang of your own. Keep your eyes on Warhammer Community for all the latest news and previews. So that is just freaking amazing. I'm just super excited that they're bringing back Nick and Moon of all things. I was, just, I was hoping they would bring it back. I thought maybe it might just be a video game. I was like, okay, so maybe digitally, but no. It's official they're bringing it back like an actual miniatures game. If I had to guess how they're going to handle this game, it's probably going to be like the same way they handled Blood Bowl, which is another one of their specialist gangs, games. Uh, like, they'll release it in from November. You'll probably get like a gang of Escher and a gang of Goliath to fight it out. And they'll probably give you like all the rules and the books and stuff for how to play the game and how to play a campaign. They'll probably give you like, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? They'll probably give you like a starter set of rules. And they'll probably release a later edition of books to like make the campaign more interesting. Wouldn't be surprised me at all if they do it like how they did Blood Bowl, where there's like multiple different versions of the books coming out. Like you'll have like a campaign book for the gangs of the Hive City, and then you probably have like a book for the Outlander gangs, like the, the Scabies, the Redemptionists, and the, and the Spires. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they, if, they, if they do that later editions as well uh, throughout the year and probably release it monthly. What I want to know is what kind of gangs are bringing back. It says they brought back some old favorites. So I wonder if they're going to bring back the original six houses and then bring new gangs. That would be kind of cool if they bring back new gangs. Like this one, I mean, I'm just assuming this one's an Escher, but I mean, who knows? It could be a totally different faction. You know, maybe this is what the rat skins look like. I'm not sure. Um, that would be really cool if they bring back like new different gangs and different factions as well. That would be really awesome as well. I hope they bring back House Kaldor because House Kaldor was like my gang. I love House Kaldor. So hopefully they'll bring him back. Also Van Sar, uh, who was the other one? Was Orlok as well as Delak. Hopefully they'll bring back those six gangs because uh, those guys are the classics. And I just love how they kept the old classic look but then kind of made it new again. It's really cool how they're doing that. I'm also excited to see what kind of rule system they use for Warhammer, uh, for uh, Necromunda. I wonder if they're going to use like the old system of rules like they did for Warhammer and Warhammer 40k where you had like movement, weapon skill, blitz skill, toughness, strength. Um, or if they're going to go with something like a new hybrid type of thing like uh, Age of Sigmar or the new edition of Warhammer 40k. I know they kept the old system when they released Shadow War Armageddon. So. And that'd be kind of neat too. I want to see what kind of new campaign rules they have. Like, do they have creds, and do we have territories, and and if so, do we have the old injuries, or do we have new injuries, and new gear and skills and stuff? It'd be kind of cool to see all the changes that they bring with that as well. That'd be kind of neat. I'm just like, super excited they're bringing this back as well. And if you're unsure about Nicaragua, feel free to check out my channel because we have like 30 something battle reports about the old school Nicaragua. You can get an idea of what it's like. I'm just stoked because I have a lot of terrain for this system and I can really easily adopt uh, this new version of Nickermundo. We got the models from my gaming group. We can just adopt them right off the bat. It'd be awesome to see exactly what this will look like. And um, now, Games Workshop, you brought back Blood Bowl, you brought back Nickermundo. Now all you need to do, all you need to do 
is bring back Mordheim. If you bring back Mordheim, that would be like freaking amazing. So please, bring back Mordheim. We need Mordheim. We need to go back to the City of Dam and fight in the ruins of the old world. Old, old, old world. That'd be awesome to do that. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for this one, you guys. Just kind of neat bringing back the old, the old Nicker game. Oh, I just can't wait for this game to come out. I'm just so excited for it. Um, as always, you guys, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Your guys' input is always invaluable. And Rabbit King one thank you very much for bringing me up to speed on this. It's because of you that are making this video. So like your guys' input is always considered valuable for us. So just all your guys' comments are always appreciated as well. Um, as well, feel free to check us out on Facebook. Same thing with Instagram as well as Google Plus for all the latest information about our hobby and what we're working on and things of that nature. So you can see exactly what's going on with terrain and, and miniatures that we're working on. And uh, yeah, that'll probably do it for this one. Remember, we alternate every Sunday with our battle report for the ninth age as well as age of sigmar and same thing every thursday with nickermunda as well as warmer uh, fantasy battle eighth edition all right you guys it's good to do for this one you guys stay classy we will see you guys on the flip side